To increase an asset, we make a debit entry. To decrease an asset, we make a credit entry. To increase a liability or capital, we make a credit entry. To decrease a liability or capital account, we make a debit entry. From a glance, you can see that the double entry rules for liabilities and capital are the same and they are opposite to the double entry rules of assets. So without wasting any further time, let's get into the worked examples that try to illustrate how we apply these double entry rules on the transactions of assets, liabilities, and capital. So when we are dealing with double entry, again, just like the way we were looking at the transactions that were affecting the accounting equation, it's the same approach even when we are dealing with double entry. We are going to first have to look at the transaction and then first of all we are supposed to identify what happened. How do we tell what happened? Very simple. You just look at what happened in the, the question states it clearly. For example, in this transaction it states that the owner starts business with 10,000 pounds cash on the 1st of August 2020. So that is exactly what happened. So the next question is what, what is affected by this transaction? Like I said, there are always two accounts that are affected in every transaction. So after identifying the two accounts that have been affected in the transaction, then we shall go ahead and make the appropriate double entry following our double entry rule. So number one, like we are saying that the owner starts business with 10,000 um, 10, cash on 1st August 2020. So that is exactly what happened. So now the question is what accounts have been affected by this transaction? So we identify the two accounts that have been affected by this transaction are we have he starts business with 10,000 cash. So it means that we have cash in the business. So cash is going to increase. Cash increases by how much? By 10,000. Yes. And so remember, it's the owner starting the business. Of course, this cash is capital. So it's like the owner invests capital into the business. And that capital is in form of cash. And then so the other account that is affected is capital. And capital also increases by... 10,000 pounds. So we are supposed to post these two transactions into our ledger accounts. Which ledger accounts have been well written right there. So we have this account. So it means that we need the cash account and then the capital account. We create them. So um, for this very one we are looking at, let's call this one the cash account. Like I had illustrated in our previous session, the title of the account is written in the middle. Uh, I'll call this the cash account. This is the debit side. And this is the credit side. So this is the cash account. And this is an increase in cash. Now from our double entry rules, cash is an asset and an increase in cash means we are supposed to debit. So we are going to debit cash. And also here, when our capital increased, the double entry rules that apply to capital are the same rules that apply to liabilities. And increase in capital, you credit. This is now the dual effect we are talking about, that a double entry has a corresponding credit entry in, and, and the two sides kind of balance, just like the way we were looking at it with the accounting equation. So here, cash increased by debit, by 10,000. So it means the corresponding credit entry is 10,000 on the capital account. And capital increases in capital, it's 10,000. So this is our cash account. And so we are going to now, now start writing in the details of the transaction. Cash increased by 10,000. So we shall come here and say 10,000. Like I said, we have our the units up here. So we, we don't have to keep writing the units 
of uh, the currency because it's already represented at the top of the column so now the folio of course this is um, the uh, after writing 10,000 the folio column represents the page of, of um, the other account that has been affected let's call this cash account page one you know these ledgers they have different pages so let's call it uh, ledger page one this is where we have the cash account so um, let's fill in the other details the owner starts business with this much uh, cash on 1st August 2020 so now when we are writing the date in this date column we shall begin by saying we shall begin with the year we say 2020 we begin with the year then we write the month August then the date first that is the order we follow we follow the, the year first uh, the year then the month then the date so that in our next write up here of the dates we don't have to keep repeating 2020 and August again we just will be writing first second third fourth while putting this I think we're going to see it as we continue ahead so this is the format we use with date so details now under the details we are going to write the other account that has been affected this is the cash account when we say cash has increased by 10,000 what is the other account that has been affected the other account that has been affected is capital so we write here capital if we are to write here capital on which page is capital that is now the folio column we write here the page the, the page of where we are to find the capital account so if we have called cash our cash account uh, page one let us create the capital account and call it page two so i'm going to create my capital account right now and call it page two so this is my capital account and this is uh, on page two so i'll call this folio column i'll call it ledger page two so i have finished posting the debit i've debited the cash so because the other account affected is capital i'll come to the capital account and i'll still say it is it, the transaction happened on 2020 august first the details are now the details here we write the other account has been that has been affected here the account is capital so it means the capital account now here the other account has, that has been affected is cash which so happened to be page one so cash is on which folio column which page ledger page we say it's on ledger page one and what was the amount the amount was ten thousand so from here we can see that this debit entry was had a corresponding credit entry right here and that is basically what we call double entry so it means that as far as this transaction is concerned we are done we have finished posting that so this is how we post in the ledger accounts so we are going to continue with the second transaction the second transaction states that a van is bought for 4500 cash on 2nd august 2020 so first of all what are the two accounts affected the two accounts affected here we have number one we have cash you see cash has uh, been affected how has it been affected has it increased or it has decreased the transaction says that a van is bought for this much cash so it means that if we used cash in the business to buy a van it means the cash in the business has decreased so if it has decreased cash has been affected what's the other account that has been affected we used cash to buy a van so now we have a van in the business so we also have an asset called van we call it a van account and the van of course van is an asset to the business and there's an increase in that so what is our double entry here cash is an asset van is also an asset cash decreased in value when cash decreases decreases in assets are credited this is a van a van is an asset and the van increased in value increases in in assets are debited so this is going to become our double entry now we are going to credit cash and debit the van 
So after making that analysis, then we shall go on to the cash account. Now we had already created the cash account. So we'll go to the cash account. Our cash account is right here. It's on page one. Um, our cash account, we are supposed to credit cash. So this is exactly what I'm going to do here. We are going to credit cash. So we shall begin. This transaction took place on August, 2nd August 2020. So I'll come here and say uh, 2020 August second the details is the other account that has been affected now the other account that has been affected here is the van the van account the van has been affected on which on which page is this van account let's create that van account and call it page three let's call this the van account this is the credit side this is the debit side and this is page three so the van is on ledger page three and what was the amount the amount was four thousand five hundred for five hundred so we have credited cash so we are going to make a corresponding debit entry on the van account because we're supposed to debit the van so we shall come here and say 2020 the details is cash the, the this is the van account so the other account that has been affected is the cash account and where is the cash account? It's on ledger page one. And what was the amount? The amount was 4,500. So we have made the double entry for this transaction. We tick it off as well. So we'll go to the next transaction. The next transaction says that fixtures, that is the shelves in the business, are bought on credit from shop fitters for £1,250 on 10th August 2020. So shop fitters, more, this is more like a name of a company, or these are suppliers we are calling shop fitters. Now these people, we went and bought on credit from them, the shop fitters. So we bought fixtures from shop fitters on credit. So there was no cash involved here. Now this is a credit transaction. If we bought from them without us paying them, it means we are supposed to pay them again. Because they gave us stuff and we didn't pay immediately and we're supposed to pay after some time, those, these shop fitters now are our creditors. So in other words, the two counts, accounts affected here, we have creditor, shop fitters, let's call them that, creditor, shop, fitters. Then we also have of course, when they are uh, shelves, now we have shelves in the in the business. So let's call that fi shelves or fixtures. Let's call it fixtures. So we have the creditor shop fitters account and then the fixtures account. These are the two items that have been affected by this transaction. Now, how are they affected? Us buying fixtures, when we buy fixtures on credit, um, it of course, fixtures are going to increase in value. And fixtures are an asset. So creditor shop fitters, these guys uh, also, their account is going to increase. And this is a liability. It's a liability because we are, li we are liable to pay them at a later, a later stage. So they are our creditors or they are our payables. So this account also increases by 1250 the asset account the fixtures also increases by 1250 so this is a liability and it increased in value according to the double entry rules increases in liabilities we what we credit and then this is an asset fixtures which increased in value increases in assets we debit so in other words, for a double entry, we are going to credit the creditor shop fitters account and then we are going to also debit the fixtures account. So we shall go ahead and create those accounts and do the necessary postings. So creditor shop fitters account, we are going to credit this by this much. So I will say the date of the transaction was 10th August, so I will say 2020 August 10th. The details is the other account that has been affected, which is the fixtures account. The folio 
uh, we have not yet established. Let's create the fixtures account as well right now. So it means there our fixtures account is on page five. So we shall call this ledger page five and the amount is 1,250. And so we shall make the corresponding double entry on fixtures where we are going to debit the fixtures account, which is an asset. So the fixtures account, we shall say again, 2020. The other account affected is creditor shop fitters. This guy is on ledger page four. And the amount is 1,250 pounds. And the double entry for those two is complete. So we shall get to our last transaction, which is already written on the screen. And the last transaction is that paid amount owing to shop fitters in cash on 17th August 2020. So this is our last transaction. Paid the amount owing to shop fitters in cash. So what are the two accounts that have been affected? First of all, we are paying in cash. So it means that cash is going to reduce. And then also uh, the other account affected is that paid amount owing to shop fitters. So our creditor, the guy that has been demanding us money, creditor, shop, fitters, we have paid him money. It means that his account is also going to reduce because when we pay him money, we are going to reduce his account. Now cash is an asset. Creditor shop fitters is a liability. What happens when an asset decreases according to the double entry rules? Um, decreases in an asset are credited. And according to the double entry rules, when a liability decreases, we debit it. So we are going to credit cash and debit shop fitters. So let's get to the cash account. Now for the cash account, we already created it. It's on page one. So our cash account is right there and uh, we are supposed to credit our cash account. So I will come here. Uh, I'm definitely following this transaction. Now here, we remember we first wrote in this date column that 2020 August 2nd. So it means that the next time I am to write a transaction here, I don't have to keep writing 2020 August again. I'll simply put these double hyphens to show that it's 2020 August. Then the only thing that I'll be writing is second or is the date. So in this case, it was 17th August. So here I'll just say 17th. Uh, the other account that has been affected, remember here we have it was cash and creditor shop fitters. So it means that uh, we are talking about cash here. Uh, creditor shop fitter, so I shall say creditor. So it's creditor shop fitters. Which account page is this one? Creditor shop fitters is on page four. Ledger page four. And how? what was the value of the transaction? Now remember the question was, now, now remember the question was saying that paid amount owing to the shop fitters in cash so the question is how much was that amount we shall go to the creditor shop fitters account to find out that amount that we are we were owing shop fitters the amount we were owing to shop fitters was 1250 so it means that this is the amount that was paid in cash so it means here we shall say it is 1250 so we are going to do a corresponding debit entry because uh, it's a liability, creditor shop fitters decreased, so we debit. So we're going to debit creditor shop fitters the liability. So again, we shall come here and say that it is 2020, August 17th. The details are cash. It's on ledger page one, and the amount is 1,250. And that completes the double entry for that transaction. In this just concluded session, I have just been introducing the double entry system of accounting. And for here, for this session, we have I have been specifically discussing assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. 
it is very important that these rules are at your fingertips. Maybe to give a recap, when a transaction takes place and there are increases in assets, we debit. When there are decreases in assets, we credit. When a transaction takes place and there are increases in capital or liabilities, we credit. And when there is a decrease in capital or a liability, we debit. It's important that these double entry laws are at your fingertips. One of the sure way to, ensure, to be sure that these have stuck is through practice. So I expect that as you're watching these lectures, you are not watching me like you're watching a movie. You're supposed to watch with your pen and paper. You keep pausing the video and do stuff as and then play to see whether the answer you are getting is what I am arriving at as well. In our upcoming session, we shall be doing another worked example, fully fledged. In this worked example, we shall be expounding more as we practice double entry. At the end of the next session, there will be a question. I encourage you to please try it out because again, I will repeat, we learn by doing. Like this video, if you like it, be sure to subscribe. Check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel. Be sure to share these videos with your friends. And as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is Alan Dranga Kuramia, and I will see you in the next session. Take care.